We know the scene. The room, variously furnished, almost always a lectern, a book, always the tall lily. Arrived on solemn grandeur of great wings, the angelic ambassador, standing or hovering, whom she acknowledges, a guest. But we are told of meek obedience. No one mentions courage. The engendering spirit did not enter her without consent. God waited. She was free to accept or refuse choice integral to humanness. Aren't there enunciations of one sort or another in most lives? Some unwillingly undertake great destinies, enact them with sullen pride, uncomprehending. More often, those moments when roads of light and storm open from darkness in a man or woman are turned away from. In dread, in a wave of weakness, in despair, <laughs> and with relief. Ordinary lives continue. God does not smite them, but the gates close, the pathway vanishes. She had been a child who played, ate, ate slept like any other child, but unlike others, wept only for pity, laughed in joy, not triumph. Compassion and intelligence fused in her, indivisible. Called to a destiny more momentous than any in all of time, she did not quail only asked a simple, how can this be? And gravely, courteously, took to heart the angel's reply, the astounding ministry she was offered, to bear in her womb infinite weight and lightness to carry in hidden, finite inwardness nine months of eternity, to contain in slender vase of being the sum of power, in narrow flesh the sum of light. Then bring to birth, push out into air the man-child, needing, like any other, milk and love. But who was God? This was the moment no one speaks of, when she could still refuse. A breath unbreathed, spirit Suspended, waiting. She did not cry, I cannot, I am not worthy, nor I have not the strength. She did not submit with gritted teeth, raging, coerced. Bravest of all humans, consent illumined her. The room filled with its light, the lily glowed in it, and the iridescent wings. Consent, courage unparalleled, opened her utterly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Welcome to Church at Home on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Lucy and I are delighted to welcome you to our home. We are really grateful to many people whose names you'll find in our order of service for leading us in our worship this morning. Thank you all. This Christmas will feel unlike any other we've experienced. We will have far fewer people, some of us nobody with whom to share it. That needn't, however, take anything away from the glory of the simple story we celebrate at Christmas. Jesus comes among us in a simple cowshed, the human face of God lying in a manger. Today we consider the woman at the heart of the story, Mary. We all have our own ways of saying no to God, but Mary said yes. This morning we consider all that yes meant for her, and if we dare to think such a thing possible, for us. So we light our Advent wreath. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, merciful and gentle, to you be praise and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world through the childbearing of blessed Mary. Grant that we who have seen your glory may be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is the Lord and Saviour of all. Blessed, blessed be God, God forever. forever. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Mary heard the voice of the angel, but we have not listened to your call. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord but we have not served you as we should. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Mary was eager to do your will, but we have not been willing to be your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son. Grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again to be our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Now, when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, to whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pastures, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more. As formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for everyone before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord and the blood. Blessings give my spirit voice tender to me. The promise of his word in God my Savior shall my heart
A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was about 10 years old, I wrote a poem which won a prize at school. I think it was the only prize I ever won at school, so no wonder I remember it. I don't recall the exact details of the poem, only that it was Mary thinking aloud. It was her kind of stream of consciousness as she wondered about how she would respond to the angel Gabriel. It was her sort of rehearsing the pros and cons of saying yes. For some reason, it has always mattered to me that Mary could have said no, that she had it in her to be able to say no. Perhaps at the age of 10, my poem was something of a complaint 
about the type of girl that always got picked to be Mary in the school nativity play, the docile girls who wouldn't say boo to a goose. I think I just wanted Mary to be a bit more impressive. I discovered, of course, over the years that Mary's ability to say no, her her kind of human agency in the divine drama, if you like, that Mary's ability to say no uh, is crucial, that her humanity matters, and that this annunciation, as we call it, is actually, you know, in a profound sense, more of a conversation, a, a dialogue, an exchange between heaven and earth, between the divine and the human. And the encounter only really has any beauty or meaning if Mary had it in her to be able to say no. The beauty is only if she chooses to say yes to God. So two worlds meet in this inexhaustibly rich moment that Luke recounts. The angel from the realms of glory and the girl from a town called Nazareth. The cosmic and the domestic converse. And of course, in ways that the creeds could never capture, even though they rather painfully tried to do so, in ways that the creeds could never capture, but only story and poetry and song can, Luke takes us to the heart of the incarnation, the mystery of God revealed as Paul puts it in uh, our second reading. The heart of the incarnation, that the child that will grow in Mary's womb is fully human and fully divine, born of God, born of a woman, two worlds meeting. Mary could have said no, but she said yes. Yes, let it be. Let this other story be told. Let love and light and hope dawn. Let them come down. Let the tables be turned. Let the lowly be lifted up. Let the hungry be filled with good things. Let the heavens open. And let me, let ordinary people like me, be part of how the story is told. So there's Mary's yes to God, but there is also God's yes to Mary. God's commitment to human life. God's love for this world in all its messiness and brokenness. Perhaps we sometimes forget that God could have said no. God didn't have to choose to come down in this way. But God chooses to make a home in the real womb of a real woman with all the risk and the vulnerability that this implies. Are you the one to make a house for me to live in? Ask God of David in our first reading. And here in this gospel story, we see where the home of God is, that God abides in and through Mary. God pitches his tent with the lowest of the low. Here, heaven says yes to earth, says yes to us. The home of God is among mortals. But I suppose there is a third yes hanging in the air. And it is the yes being asked of us as we gaze on this scene, as we stand at the gates of Christmas. It's the question of whether we will be able, willing, open, imaginative enough to say yes to being caught up 
in this mystery. Courageous enough to let go of our plonkety, plonk, flat-footed certainties. To let our world-limiting rationalism be overwhelmed and overcome by this mystery of God's love that would come to us and be with us. We're all meant to be mothers of God, wrote Meister Eckhart famously centuries ago. But I wonder what saying yes to this new birth in us would look like. What would change? What would be different? What would we have to say no to as individuals, as churches? It might be that in the um, disorientation and the loss of this difficult year, that there actually is a chance for us to encounter Christmas differently and to hear the angels sing and to say yes to this other story, yes to this other dimension of reality, yes to the lowly being lifted up, yes to the hungry being filled with good things, yes to Christmas, and yes to our part in the Christ being born. So as we stand on the threshold of Christmas, in all our frailty, with all our joys and our sorrows, with our hopes and our fears, with our faith and our doubts, We stand with Mary in our frail humanity and we contemplate our yes to God just as we hear God saying yes, yes, yes to us. So on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we give thanks to God. We give thanks to Mary. We say, let the Christ be born. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Through him him all things were made. 
for us and for, and for our salvation, salvation. He, he came down, down from heaven, was, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, we praise you for the first to believe in you, Mary, your mother. You call us to be people of faith as she was to believe as she did, to follow the Father's call, to allow you, the living word, to be conceived in our hearts. Open all in us that is closed to you. Unfreeze our hearts that we may believe. Unblock our minds that we may say yes, as Mary did. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, the Father sent an angel to announce your birth. May we have faith to receive the messengers you send. Help us to hear God's word to us, to dream dreams and see visions. Help us to let go of all fear and embrace an unexpected future. Send angels of courage to your church in this time of pandemic that your holy people may be renewed. Be with all faithful people in this season of joy in darkness. We pray for Stephen, our bishop, Olivia and Alan, his assistants, all who lead the churches throughout the world and all the baptised faithful. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, you are the descendant of David, and Mary is the daughter of Israel. The chosen people received your word, which has been carried to all nations. End the violence and conflict of the world. Bring justice everywhere and a fair sharing of the gifts of creation. Protect our planet and bring us to repent of our misuse of this earth. Send angels of wisdom to the leaders of the nations. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, our Prime Minister and Government, and the leaders and governments of all the world. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, with Joseph and Mary, you grew up in a loving family. Grant happiness and joy to all families. Be with those who are suffering stress, discord or violence at home. Protect those who are abused. Send angels of joy to our families in this pandemic, that we may be joyful even when we sorrow, that we may find words of lament that set us free to rejoice in the salvation you have brought us. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, you turned water into wine when Mary asked you. Hear our prayers. Bring the wine of healing to the sick, the suffering, the lonely and the anxious. Relieve the anguish of all facing unemployment, hardship and poverty this Christmas. Send angels of healing where your people are broken and damaged. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, Mary was with you when you died on the cross. Help us not to be afraid of death. Give us comfort in the presence of sisters and brothers and bring angels of consolation 
to those who are close to death. May we never doubt that you have conquered death and that those who die in you will live forever. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, Mary was with the disciples at Pentecost. Send your Holy Spirit to us that we may receive the gifts that you have promised, that our tongues may be loosened, that we will heal the suffering. Restore your church, renew your holy people, and set us alight with passion to make you known in our time. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, Mary pondered all that she heard in her heart. In a moment of silence, we bring before you the deepest movements of our hearts and minds. Jesus, you are the only one who can save us. Hear our prayer. Jesus, you send us the joy of the Holy Spirit in our fellowship with Mary, your mother, Joseph, our husband, Friedswide, Barinus, and all the saints of this and every age. With them we commend our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus will be called the Son of God, and of his kingdom of peace there will be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. God, our Father, your handmaid Mary offered her body and soul to join with you in the work of salvation. Come to meet us 
in promise and in challenge. Nourish us with the bread of heaven and receive this offering we bring before you of ourselves, a living sacrifice in your service. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give thanks, thanks and, and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. He is the one foretold by all the prophets whom the Virgin Mother bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came. And in his love, Christ fills us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth, so that when he comes again, he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on all your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. 
so that we in the company of Mary and all your saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are many, many we, we are, are one body, because, because we all share in one, one bread. bread. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sin of the world, world. Have, have mercy upon us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. To the, to the glory of God, God the Father. Father.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Christ our Lord, promised to Mary, promised to all the nations, bring in the kingdom of peace and make his home in our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 